Hi guys, my name is Meats. This is going to be a review for Plastic Action Kit number 5. We have Arter. Now this is made by a company called Plum. For those who are not familiar with Plum, they're kind of like Wave and they're kind of like not the mainstream mold kit company. Like we know, like Bandai and Kotobukiya. So they, they make mold kits as well as other figures. Uh, but uh, they have their own particular line and it's a little interesting how they make their kits. It's quite different. And I got intrigued with this black series. I like the aesthetic of them. And in some sense, they are kind of like frame arms. You have an inner frame that you put the armor on, and it's the same for all of them. They have the same inner frame, uh, but which is modular. And again, you put different armors on them, and they become become they become different kits. So we have Arthur here, and it's kind of surprising because they start out with the Japanese warlords. We have Date, Sanada. Oda and Takeda. Now those four, <laughs> they're from Japanese. Now they're going, well, essentially King Arthur here. They're going with their European uh, counterparts. So it'll be interesting uh, what they'll make next. And hopefully uh, I'll continue this particular uh, model kit line. <laughs> so here's the box art. Here we go. I got my from Ami Ami. And uh, this one does have a sword and a shield, and you can holster them on the back. And it retails about roughly 4,000 yen. Um, Amiami does have their uh, little discount thing, which still you have to pay uh, shipping, which I just consider getting it for the full price with free shipping. Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's how I think of things. So roughly this is going to cost you about $30, $35. Depending on where you get it, it might cost a bit more since it's kind of like not your mainstream kit. And it's interesting. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for the box art. Let's take a look inside. Right, we have the illustrated booklet here. And inside um, we have a color guide if you were to paint it. Here we go, and there's instructions here on how to build it. It's really straightforward. It's not that complicated. Yeah, I just, I just want to show that. And here's the kit. This is all uh, not altered. Uh, it's basically what you'll get after you build it out of the box. There's no panel lining on this, no paint or anything. And I'm still finding the time to work on them uh, the other plaques I have <laughs> I haven't done anything on them yeah but uh, definitely adding panel lines on this one will look uh, great and just comparing this you know with this how uh, you'll see there's lines how it's painted um, definitely it'll look a lot better but again, <laughs> given time. But I just want to go over this. It's a really cool kit. Um, Color-wise, it has an uh, interesting color scheme. You got this lavender color. Slightly purple. And you have this uh, vibrant yellow. And uh, you have this kind of like off-white color um, over here. As well as to the sword. It looks really cool. And you also have this clear blue plastics. Actually, they have it on the ice as well. Now, building this kit um, could be a little challenging. It's not your uh, straightforward Bandai, which made everything easy. It does require a little bit of super glue on certain parts. Um, like putting this white piece here. There is a peg, but the peg is not... Well, how do I put this? It's not snug. So it'll be loose and it could fall off. So there actually suggest to put some super glue on it uh, which I have done those are affixed now and certain areas like uh, actually this whole face here that slides up may require that as well which I have done so but other than that um, it's it's a solid kit um, actually let's uh, there's let me just uh, swap this out first so you do have two pairs of hands, one to hold the weapon, and you got another to hold, or just an open hand actually, not to hold anything. 
There we go. Matriculation wise, uh, we have uh, the neck here, which uh, it's actually double jointed. <laughs> really good articulation. This crest has uh, come off. And when you're in storage, you probably want to remove that. Some nice details on here. Really cool. I like it. Now on the shoulder, uh, this actually is slide on with this tab here. Not the best or secure way. I kind of wish there's another peg system here to mount on it. So this just slides in. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> But um, it still kind of gives you a little bit of articulation here and there. Um, you have the swivel here. You have your elbow bend. You have your hand. Um, you do have this waist, uh, or actually not waist, the shoulder thing or chest that uh, allows it to move forward unless this thing pops out. <laughs> uh, actually, this thing. Let me show that one. So this one moves forward here and this one actually pays on the back first there we go and this is probably one of those might need some super glue to connect uh, these tabs together uh, possibly when you're doing your seam line removal that's probably the best way super glue to be placed and I can just oh great <laughs> all right there we go so uh, as you can see it's things could fall apart um, as you play around with this uh, particular kit it's it's not the well even this part here I'm trying to get it aligned it doesn't want to there we go Moving on to the chest. Yeah, likely uh, it'll be best to put some super glue on this. Uh, it'll be more secure, but uh, for now. Then uh, you have. The it's really hard to move the. I'll just remove that part here. There is a waist joint, which is. A bull joint that's really stiff at the moment. Alright, I put everything together, but uh, definitely, I just want to point out this one, it's two halves, um, as you can see, and it has to be really put together uh, for it to hold those pegs. So, super glue. And there we go. Yeah, I cannot really do much with the waist, it's a stiff joint. Uh, you have your side skirt, which is in a swivel poly cap. Um, the poly cap is held in a interesting way. It's actually a, not quite a poly cap, but it's, it looks like a poly cap. It's plastic, and uh, this thing, it's just like this, and the poly cap just stays there. It's not like a it grabs the peg on the side of the poly cap. So this is free flowing. It does not stay in one position and putting it on could be troublesome as well. So there we go. You have this uh well <laughs> crotch guard. Actually this part here you have to glue it in there. But um there is a poly cap there as well. You can move this side to side depending on which position you want. The back skirt is connected in a poly cup as well and uh, it is required to be glued on the back there we go now moving on we have the legs um you get fairly good articulation this actually the joint here is an angled angled up and uh, articulation is a, a bit limited considering you got this armor here but uh, you cannot take them off. Uh, 
Eh, I kind of forgot how this thing is connected. Oh, wait, no, it's pegged on both sides, so it'll be, it, it'll, it stays there fairly good. You have, you have double jointed knee. And let me put this back on. Till it pops out. Wonderful. <laughs> Alright, I found those two the pieces. So knee band is a bit limited. You could probably do a little bit more. There we go. Uh, not too bad and there is also a swivel there I uh, see that joint right there you get that swivel ankle joint uh, actually fairly good not too bad there's no toe joint it's just all flat and actually these pieces here may tend to pop off because um, they're held just with that uh, long or flat peg again super glue will probably be helpful so there's a lot of parts here that could have been or may need super glue like this gap here the seam yeah might as well glue it in place and do some seam line removal on those yeah definitely that would help a lot anyway so that's it for articulation it is quite limited and it could be frustrating especially if things are not a fix <laughs> but i just want to demonstrate that it is part of this kit Moving on, we have the shield, not to mention the shield, that is a problem also, pop that out. The joint on the wrist is not too bad. Now this one, what I've done here is I've added blue tack because, well, another part is putting this on, which it's a problem on its own. Actually, let me just uh, clean this up real quick. Um, if you haven't worked with Plutac, they're the best thing to have. It's just for anything. They're easy to clean up. Uh, they're kind of like Play-Doh. And uh, it, it helps uh, hold things together temporarily or permanent. So anyways, um, you have this hand here. And you have to slide this in. There we go. Now, these pegs here are different size, and it goes this way. Yep. Now, this is fine, but it does tend to pop off quite easily, hence why I put some blue tack in there and for it to hold. There we go. And it's holds in place enough um, I mean I could make it small enough though you don't see any of the blue tag out but that's fairly good now you get the shield um, in the instructions it tells us to add a little bit of color the blue metallic blue on the power lines and that uh, this backside here is actually black so if that's something I have to paint or something we have to add on so for this uh, it's probably best to put this on here first and put the shield on. Straightforward shield. Likewise, the same thing here on the sword. I added blue tack to hold the sword. It's just makes it a lot uh, sturdier in terms of connection. Sword is actually quite nice. I like the detail. It does require again to add a little bit of metallic blue on the panel lines. Really nice. I like it. Um, unfortunately, this blue plastic is in one piece. So, like certain parts, like the inside here, that it'll probably be better if you paint silver underneath. You're not going to be able to do that. And we just pop out the wrist joint, put this on here, and we have the sword. And you got your own knight here. I really like the look on this. It's something different. <laughs> right, so um, let me just get him to stand properly. Here we go. There's another accessory right here. And this is basically the, kind of like a tray on the back. This is to hold the sword. Actually, 
Nope, that's not the right way. This is the proper way. Here we go. Yeah, get that little support here to <laughs> kind of balance out. Now for this, you grab your sword. I'm just gonna pretend the hands, I remove the hands. <laughs> it will be resting like here. It's such a weird uh, way they had this, but yeah, there we go. And uh, for the shield, you have the peg connection here. You're gonna be removing it from the handle. There we go. And I'm gonna strap on the back. Yeah. yeah. Um, oops. This is actually not too bad. He can stand without much problem um, with that thing on the back. Well, you may want to lean him a little bit forward. There you go. And that's pretty much it for this kit. And also, uh, I just want to quickly go over Carrasso. So Carrasso is right here. You have a line art of what it looked like. It's basically a bird. And for those who've uh, kind of seen my Oda, it's the same. You put the backpack on, you see the wings. You probably have some kind of uh, transformation. Well, from the looks of it, the head becomes one of the forearm guard or shield. Then you can use one of the claws as like Wolverine claws on for the other side. And this is all molded in gray. Yeah. Lots of work. <laughs> but yeah, um again I bought this kit out of Kirata City. Um I like the particular line. It's it's different. If you want to try something different, here we go. But um do mind that it is an expensive kit. You're gonna be looking at about 40 maybe 40 bucks for this and for those who are used to Bandai's pricing yeah this is a little bit too much anyways uh, that's about it for this particular kit black number five Arthur hope you guys like this review if you have any questions um let me know so until then this is Meads thanks for watching